Hi, it's Jan Beta, and I have this Commodore 64 here on my bench today, and it is broken in a way that I don't exactly know what it is, but I have some guesses uh, I can make. Let me show you what it does. So we get this garbage, garbage screen there. So here's our screen and close up and um, let me show you I can do stuff I'm changing the background color to zero which is black. Look at that works a treat. Um, I can do stuff like program But the the cursor is um, somewhere. It's double and stuff like that. So yeah. So I wrote a little program there blindly, <laughs> typing one. Some letters are correct. Some display crap. This should be hello. Uh, just an endless loop. But yeah. Apparently the the letters are the same. But it, uh, the L is the, the pound sign and stuff like that. So it is a bit off. Let's put a test cartridge in it, I think. Okay, I'm using the, the dead test cartridge, um, which allows me to yeah, basically, this is for troubleshooting. Um, black screen Commodore 64s because it overrides the kernel ROM and it basically works if even the, if the video out doesn't work it still flashes the screen if um, RAM is bad which is a common fault uh, on the Commodore 64. So let's see what it does in this case. So okay I'm turning it on and it takes a while for the dead test to start because it's initializing stuff and testing the RAM. Okay, so this is a garbage screen too. Let's see if it passes the test. It does some test. This is kind of a strange fault. It doesn't appear to... doesn't appear to be a, a RAM fault there. Otherwise it would have shown the colors seem to be correct so it would have shown a red um, thing all there. Hmm. That's strange. My guess would be the VIC-2, the video chip, or maybe the PLA. Maybe some logic chips. Yeah, okay, the sit seems to be fine. <laughs> just um, played back. That's something. Oh, uh, just played back stuff. So, it appears to be working normally, except for the screen being garbage. Let's try the other diagnostic card I have, which is the diagnostic card. And this is the dead test. The diagnostic um, only works if the screen works and stuff. So, let's take a look at that. So here goes, here goes the diagnostic card. And it also has garbage stuff going on there. And the three red um, zero things there are because I don't have the, the test harness on there. Yeah, I think the RAM is okay. The CIA is... The CAAs are telling me they are bad. It has a different uh, sit test there. So the CAAs might be bad. That would explain the problem here. So I have to look at this. Um, on a 
on a working Commodore 64 before I can make any any statements about what is bad. It seems it's the 6526, which is the CIA's, but I think it might have to do with me not having the test harness um, and this displaying bad because it would do some test over the cables that would be connected if I had the test car uh, the harness. So this might be a red herring. But I wonder what these red things on top there are. Let's see. Okay, so I have uh, I got the Commodore 64C out that I have just for kicks, um, just to see how the um, diagnostics cartridge normally works. So I'm turning it on, and that's what we normally get. Now it displays three bad things there, and it displays the CIA's as bad anyway. And it sounds very different, um, the, the Commodore 64C has the newer SID chip, which sounds quite a bit different from the... I think, in, in my to my ears, it sounds a lot colder and a lot harsher. So I like the, the old 6581 um, SID a lot better than the 8550 it is um, in the new Commodore 64s. So yeah, but that's... Yeah, that's... I think it's the same um, faults that are displayed in the other one. So, yeah, I don't have a clue really. They are displayed as bad, the CAAs, so it could still be the CAAs because it's, it can't really um, test them properly without the harness. Hmm. That's difficult to, to diagnose there. So there is this thing that I really, really like um, that Derbian does. Um, the Pictorial Commodore 64 Fault Guide, which is basically a, a website that has um, Commodore 64 failure modes um, on it. You can just look at the pictures and see which one matches uh, your your fault there. So I think it might be the PLA, of course, which is I think the most uh, common failure. Which are these pictures here? There that produces garbage screens. It's might be the VIC and might be some logic. This looks a lot like a U25. U25. Oh, it says here if it's an, an MOS chip, it might be that it fails. Otherwise, it's quite unlikely. The MOS chips doesn't don't seem to be um, that great. So, display graphics, yeah, but it's not quite the thing we have. The oscillator, capacitor, the fuse. <laughs> so, no, we have garbage um, characters on screen, but the characters look fine. So, might be well, a logic chip there. Oh, that's U14, that mirrors double text and cursor. U14, incorrect characters. Machine still operating, just incorrectly displayed. Okay, so that might be it, I think. Um, it's not a good photo, but you, I will link that site in below. So let's make a list of stuff, I think. So I think um, I will note down U14 logic because of the, the failure mode um, being double text and cursor. 
which is I think what we had incorrect characters characters so maybe that's it could also be the PLA which is always a suspect it could also be the VIC2 which we can check by just placing another wig in there I think I have some test wigs that only slightly um, with some slight faults that we can put in there to check and it might as well be the CPU or other logic I think we can rule out RAM because um, we checked the dead test and the um, and the diagnostic cartridge and they both um, didn't find anything so yeah which I think includes um, screen RAM and stuff like that so it's <clears throat> some I think this U14 seems to be quite some something let's check the the chips we can at first so I've already taken out the screws and uh, put them in a little bag. So I think we won't need the keyboard. So here's our Commodore 64 board and as you can see it's uh, um, 250407 which is I believe the, the second edition or the third one, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I would have to look that up. And I already desoldered the um, shielding on the wick. I desoldered it all together. I could have taken off the, the lid here. But yeah, I was kind of stupid. I think you can just pop up the lid and then you can um, reach the wick. I will resolder this later because it also has the nice little tab which, which is a heatsink for the wick too. So, yeah, let's um, put another VIC-2 in here. I have some spares that are, that are working, but not quite perfectly, but they will do fine as a, as a testing object here. So, okay, where's my IC puller? Let's get out the VIC-2 here, which is not that hard, I think. So let's put in, this is one I, I particularly like because it's, um, I made a little dollar sign on there. What this does, it works perfectly fine, but it displays a row um, of um, dollar signs on the screen. So um, vertical line, it is not a row. So that's sitting there. Let's see. What it does. Maybe this is the whole the whole fault in this. And I'm turning it on. And yeah, as you can see, we still have the garbage screen, but we have a row of uh, I think it's a four or something like that. And we really have two blinking cursors, so the yeah, it's not the Vic. The Vic is fine probably. Yeah, I think we can cross the Vic off the list, doesn't change anything, VIG2 is okay. So I think this one here, yeah, this is U14, it's written there, I don't know if you can see it. This is our um, U14, which is, I'm writing it down, an MOS, OS7709. 7709. This is an MOS 7709, which was made in 84, like the whole board, so it wasn't changed or anything. So, I guess this might be it. 7709. Um, let me Google this. So, I just looked it up on Google and found the the forum thread where the picture we saw came from 
and the description fits quite perfectly. So the MOS7709 is a 74LS258 chip and um, in order to try if this works I'm gonna need to desolder it and uh, I'm gonna put it in a little socket I think. I have some sockets here, some good ones with the round holes. I like those uh, the best. Um, yeah, and then I'm basically going to put uh, another chip in from a Commodore 64 board I have lying around for spares, really, that has this chip on it in its um, 74LS258 incarnation, so to say. So, as you can see, I got the station out. Let's get desoldering! Whoa. It's kind of like this part. Let's see, this is the one here, 14. Let's mark the spot on the, on the, side of the board here. Mm. So you have to be very, very careful with these um, old boards. There's sometimes it's very, very hard um, not to damage them. But usually it's okay with the desoldering station. So yeah, uh, this looks quite neatly. I shall put this on here. And yeah, it looks nice under there the sport is in very good nick and it's um it's also it smells really nice it's the one that came with the 1541 i made the video about that smelled really nice of um tobacco that you the pipe t tobacco that smells a bit like vanilla vanilla and stuff like that which, I, which is a smell i really like and this whole board the whole commodore 64 smells like that um it was owned by a pipe smoker apparently so yeah i got both of these things together the 1541 didn't work and this uh, doesn't work fully so i hope to get this fixed too like i did with the 1541 of course so let's solder in a socket there so i'm heating up the soldering iron in the background here so a little socket it holds, it holds in there quite well already. So let's just solder it in. There we go. Not too bad. So now for the um, the board to salvage one from. So here's my spare board which has um yeah I, I used this as a spare board because it had some trouble with the um the connections on the RAM are basically um I tried to solder in a new RAM um thing and uh totally messed it up and some of the the um lines the traces are broken and stuff like that and um, also there's something else rotten on here I think one of the one of the chips is bad but I don't know which one I haven't tested it but there's so much stuff you can salvage from these um, that you can't find anywhere else basically um, starting with the with the power switch and stuff like that and so I kept this around and I'm slowly um, taking off parts the PLA is already missing I repaired the my main machine Commodore 64 with that because the PLA was bad on that one and mm, the SID yeah stuff like that um, the VIC of course was also bad on some machine that I repaired so now is for the for the little um, LS um, logic chip, which I can't see at the moment. Oh, there it is. It's this one here. 
it's in a slightly different position, but that's um, that's another board revision. So it also has quite a lot less chips around the VIC-2 um, for the, the timing and stuff. Just this little one that um, basically took all the functions of the other chips on the old board and put it into one. At least I don't have to worry about um, damaging the board here. <laughs> the donor board. So that's the official title of these things here. And I hope I can bring the other one back to life. Or back to um, health, let's say. It lives, but not quite the way it should live. So I think might just come off there. Yeah. yeah that's pretty nice to me. Okay, let's put that into the socket we put on the other board there. Let's straighten the, the pins a bit. I what I tend to do to do this is to just use the table and lay it flat and um, bend them a bit inwards to yeah see. So the make sure you align it properly, or in this case I should align it properly of course. And put it in there. And it fits pretty nicely. Hope it works. Okay, let's turn it on. Woohoo! And yeah, bang on. Um, the dollar signs, that's my the broken wick uh, too I mentioned. But otherwise, yeah, that was exactly what the problem was. So yeah, usually this is a pain in the ass, troubleshooting these, but this um, ever since I found this pictorial um, guide that is of course linked in below, I think I mentioned that before, it's a very very handy tool. That and uh, Ray Carlson's troubleshooting guides, which I will also link again, which I always recommend um, going through when you're repairing um, Commodore uh, machines. Um, he has some very, very good uh, um, troubleshooting guides for these. So yeah, that I, I shall um, replace the VIC-2 again with the, with the other one and give this a proper test, I think. So okay, first things first, I got the VIC replaced there. Let's see if it does the, the normal um, startup screen now. Yes, it does. Beautiful. Okay, I think let's try uh, the diagnostics card and see what this that says about everything. It looks really looks pretty nice, I think. So it, it reports all these um, bad things there because it doesn't have the cables that would um, show that these chips are good, really. Yeah, so it seems to be a working Commodore 64. Hmm. That's pretty nice. So, all right. Um, Let's see, I have my SD to IEC connected here. Let's go with some some buggy boy maybe. Okay, so this machine seems to be yeah, let's see. Let's pick off road. I have to do something to play, actually. 
Yeah, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, maybe um, got some useful information for repairing your own Commodore 64 or someone else's Commodore 64, which is always a noble uh, thing to do, I think. Um, yeah, keep the old machines alive, basically, and uh, use them and don't put them in the cupboard and uh, let them rot away. So, thanks for watching. If you want to support me, there's um, a Patreon page I made that you can give me money on, or you can look into the video description to find all sorts of other <laughs> things to support me. Give this a little thumbs up, of course, which always helps. Um, comment on this, very happy to communicate with you and follow me on Twitter and yeah, I'm even on Facebook, although it's just a copy of Twitter. So yeah, thanks, hope to see you again on this channel, I'm Jan Beta, bye! So that's game over for Jan.